Hi, everyone. You know, there was a time when you, when you wanted to speak with someone, you would actually go up to them and find out where they were and communicate with them and get your message across. And they got the benefit of tone of voice and they got to see you and to see uh, how you were feeling about things, the facial uh, indications you were giving about seriousness and that sort of thing, some cues that they would use. But things have changed and we want things done a lot faster than we ever did before. Uh, now, everyone seems to have a funny story about some kind of a message that they've received um, that set them back on their heels, whether it was in, in humor or in distress, uh, maybe up for debate, but they've received messages that aren't exactly what the uh, sender intended. Um, there are some very funny ones out there, and um, uh, they are sent with unintended consequences. An example of this is a, a message um, where mom sent a group to a uh, message to a group of siblings saying, Daddy's in heaven. <laughs> Unfortunately, she didn't include the picture of him in his new boat. Uh, so there was a bit of a shock wave that went when you first read that message. But they did survive and they did carry on and get the rest of the message. But, you know, unintended consequence there. You, I don't think she really wanted to shock the entire family. And it would have been fun to see uh, their faces. And we know that these social media, things like uh, email, instant messages, tweet, Instagram, and other things, they're, they're great tools for business and for uh, our personal life as well. Um, one of the issues is that uh, you know, they, they've been a catalyst for a lot of great change. I mean, it wasn't all that long ago where, in, for uh, legal purposes, you actually had to have an actual copy of a signed in-ink pen uh, document that was proved that the party was signing it actually had done that. And now, I mean, I, I've been signing things by e-signature for some time. I can transfer money if I want to anyone just by sending it to their email address and coordinating some kind of a password with them so they can get the cash. So these are all great things. Uh, but there are some shortcomings and we need to have caution in, in sending our messages. Uh, I don't know if you can quite see this one, so I'm going to read it out. It says, hello, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to have to disappear uh, as I've lost a member of my family last night. I've moved meetings, asked others to cover things, uh, can't be moved. I believe everything is in hand. Uh, I will keep on my mobile, I'll keep my mobile on, pardon me, just in case of emergencies. Please accept my apologies. I'll be back on Monday. Regards, so-and-so. And, of course, their boss answered, of course, uh, so, so very for, uh, sorry for your loss. And then, of course, shocked, they uh, correct that by saying, I hate autocorrect, I meant of course. <laughs> so, I mean, again, it's not so funny, but, you know, it's still a circumstance, they didn't mean it, but what was on their mind came through on the message that they sent back to the party who was uh, being contacted. Um, it does allow us to get our thoughts across quickly, perhaps that's the problem, a little too quickly, that what we really need to do is do a little bit more thinking about what we're sending. Uh, as in this one, where someone embarrassing sent, uh, <laughs> instead of their CV, they sent a recipe for beef, beef chili. I'm sure entertaining, but not exactly the impression they want to lay on the parties that they're sending it to. So. Um, we tend not to reread our messages before we send them off, and we don't stop to think about how it may be received. Sometimes, you know, I mean, someone's going to write that off and say, that's pretty funny, and they'll recount it to friends. But the person who sent it is going to be mortified. Um, so there's a something um, missing in being able to convey our intentions. And uh, here we have something that says where mom just accidentally <laughs> prematurely sent an email to an accounting firm. It was supposed to say, I'm afraid that we will have to postpone our meeting. But she sent it right after she'd written, hi, Jeffrey, I am afraid. So, okay. So we have to be very careful about what it is we're trying to get across. And as one wag said, uh, his family was very sad because his father has come down with emojis. <laughs> uh, he said, he just sent me a message consisting of a man running, a pile of poo, and a gun. I have no idea. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not sure what the intent was there, but, uh, you know, someone's having a bit of a problem. So, funny or not, we have to take 
into consideration what's going to happen. So there's three things I'm going to suggest that we do. And one of them is know your intention. Have that planned ahead of time. What is you want to get across? Take a moment to consider the impact of the message you're going to send. And if it's unclear, uh, a message that you receive, ask questions to make it clear. Thank you. Apparently I'm set to play some Jonathan <laughs> Colton at five minutes. I'm oh, gonna... don't run away. We still have questions. Like five, well, three minutes for questions. I was going to run away. It's just outstanding. So if that comes on, you're at five minutes, people. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? What's the funniest one you've said? <laughs> uh, well, I didn't, I was the person who was working for me, but I love this one because uh, the person working for me had had a particularly difficult session with a client who had been quite blunt and open about their feelings of their dealings with our company. And so my person came back, wrote up a hasty note and had it sent off and what it thanked them for was, it, you know, I, I want to thank you for your condor. <laughs> Not the message they want to get across, but especially trying to uh, grovel a little bit. Uh, but I mean, they saw the, they saw the funny in it at least. Anything else? Can you repeat your recommendations? Okay. Yes. Uh, the first one is know your intention. What is it I'm trying to get across to, to the party that I'm sending this message to? Is it meant to be serious? Is it meant to be humorous? Is it just an information transfer so that you know what it is you're trying to accomplish? Take a moment to consider the impact of the message that you're sending. Like, if I was to receive this message, how would I, how would I receive it? And, and try and, you know, get out of your mind. You're the one who's sending the message, but you want to see how that would land on you if you got a message that said that. And the last thing is if you're unclear about a message that you receive, uh, rather than reacting, why not ask a clarifying question? I'm not sure I understand what it exactly it is you're trying to get from me or trying to have me do. Could you tell me a bit more, please? And at least you can't be wrong in doing that. I mean, if it happens three or four times in a row, perhaps. But <laughs> a clarifying question is always worth, you know, always be clear, right? A, B, C, always be clear. You want to make sure that your communication is both ways. And you have to take on the responsibility that if there's a Break down on their communications, take responsibility yourself, own it, and then, and, and it's funny because there always seems to be time to repair a communication and never enough time to prepare a communication. That's a good line. Yeah. <laughs>